Jim Clay, looks like you're all here. My name is Bob Bryan. Thank you. I am the State Railroad Engineering Manager for the State of Delaware. And I'm also the Executive Director, Regional Director for Operation Lifesaver for the Mid-Atlantic Region. So I um, appreciate the opportunity to be here and talk to you and uh, give you a little tidbits, I guess, of, of railroad safety and what we should all do as, as bus drivers, right, so we operate safely. I know I was here a couple years ago to talk to you all, and I'm happy to be back. So I hope you'll find this interesting. Uh, this is my assistant, Sean Robinson, and he's going to be talking to you this morning. Sean, you're talking about operational safety, safety, around trains. When you're around trains, when you see them, you see train tracks. What's the one thing you do as a bus driver when you come across, when you come up to the railroad crossing? What's the one thing? Did you know that even <coughs> social media, and I see it, I see it every day, I count, which is sad that I have to count, especially on Facebook, how many collisions how many incidents occur between pedestrian and train, car, train, truck, train, anything that comes in the path of a train. It happens just about every day, every three hours. Someone's getting hit by a train, which is not good. It's scary, and it's upsetting. So every three hours. Which, at first, when I first started Operation Ice there, I said every three hours. But then I started to see it, and it started opening my eyes just a little bit more. And it came to think, anywhere around the world, anywhere around the country at least, someone's getting hit and killed, or hit and injured. So, so we want to talk about how to avoid those scenarios. As you approach a railroad crossing, no matter if it's just this X and a sign, X sign flashers, or you see all the crossing gates and everything, if you see that, always expect the train. No matter what, no, anywhere. Even if there's grass growing up on it, <coughs> you know, if there's trees clumped over it, there's still going to be a train right there, right at that crossing. See, I'm, where I'm at, the Walkersville Southern Railroad, I'm a conductor. This is what we're seeing inside a cab of the train. When we're looking down, all we see is the cars. We're up here, you're down here. When you're a bus, it's still the same concept. You're still down at this level. We're way up. And this is all we can see. And it's scary. Everything just pauses for a second. Well, what's going to happen? Because trains are big, trains are long, and they're very heavy. We don't have a steering wheel. As you can see, wherever those rails go, we're going. We're not going to turn. We're going to stay straight right with them. We can't avoid anything. You can, as drivers. Does anyone know the distance? As you can see, there's 200 feet for a car. What's the distance when you're driving a bus? How? Yes, ma'am. 15 and 50. The distance it takes you all to stop. All to stop. All to stop. Four hundred. Like fifteen hundred. Or a bus? Two hundred thirty feet for a bus. Which is pretty good. That was close. At fifty-five miles. Three hundred feet for a traffic trailer. Passenger train six hundred feet. Now let's take this guess. How long does it take for a massive freight train to stop? Wow. Okay. 5,280 feet. Wow. It's driving 55, 55, 60 miles an hour. At least. At least. And we'll get to that because the weight of it. It makes a difference. And when you're at these crossings, if you get stuck, 
And those people want to tell them, don't sit in the car. There's been people that have tried to start their car, get out and try to push it. Nope. Gotta leave it. Your wallet and phone, just get and go. Don't sit there. Don't wait. People have a tendency to do that to try to save their belongings. All you can do is get out and run. Run towards the train. Because when your car gets hit, your car is going outward. It's going the way that you're you're running again, you're running <coughs> towards the train, your car is going that way, into pieces. Because there's nothing that can stop it. You run at a 45 degree angle towards the train, away from your vehicle. Don't look back, don't think twice. Go. Get away. Is that human nature? No. Well, I mean, you're in your vehicle and it stalls. Yeah. What, what do you do? You try to start it again, right? It's human nature. People have tried this. We're used to doing that thing. <coughs> Not when you're on a train, right? Don't take the chances. This is one thing I like to tell, especially on the passenger trains. This blue sign. Anywhere, when you leave here today, if you have to go across train tracks, I want you to try to look for this sign right here. This sign right underneath the crossing. No matter if it's just a regular cross bus, across, I want you to look for this sign. This sign is very, very important because, as you can see, report emergency or problem. You call that number, it'll go to the railroad. It's not going to be a computer. It's not going to, you're going to go through a thousand messages. You're going to answer directly. You're going to hear a person answer that number because you're calling them for an emergency. You are stuck on those tracks. You call that number, this number right here, below it where it says crossing, will say the GPS locator. It's the number, GPS location of that crossing. Crossing number 836-597H. You would tell them, that's the GPS locator. This dispatcher will tell the train crew where you're at so they can stop the train and an incident from happening. Most people don't know that. It's been around, but so yes, this blue sign right here, you'll see it. I want everybody, when they leave here today, look for that sign. If you come into a railroad crossing, just give a little glimpse, you'll see it. It's on there. On all railroad crossings throughout the nation. Some of our way ain't got it. We have some of them don't. Just the one. <coughs> if you see a crossing that does not have this sign, Report that to your transportation board. Is this a lot of shelters will going on. They're all active rat, uh, tracks. All of, our, all of our crossings at the railroad I'm at, even the farm crossing that's just a dirt road for just tractors, has that blue sign sitting right there underneath the axe. <laughs> approaching, approaching a passive railroad crossing. Has anyone ever seen these two before? Yes. Have you just seen this only? Just this only? Yeah. Sometimes this is not on there. It could be a fresh paved road. It could be a back road with no lines at all. Remember when you see this? That crossing's up ahead. Right there. It's going to be right in the vicinity of where the sign's going to be. And then the next thing you're going to see is the road marking. It's nice and stretched out too. Can't miss it. Cross box on the ground, this, and then you come up to this crossing right here. When you see that, it's a cross box sign. Cross box. <coughs> it's an X, wooden pole or metal pole, no <coughs> lights, no lights and gates. Just a cross box. You see that sign. When you see that, what do you, what do, you do when you come to that crossing? Uh, uh, stop. You check, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Just remember this. If you see that, there's always going to be a train there. Any crossing. I've had people that, oh, I just, I'll just go through. Now, always take precaution. There's no lights. There's no warning at all. It's just a sign. You stop. These advances, just before you get to the crossing. You know, people don't ever treat, this is, intersection but you do not ever pass. Whenever someone stops, they stop at that line. There's been people, for instance, 
A car will stop at that line. Two nine personal. Go right around. <coughs> oh. It's a big no no. Don't do that. You can't go around that. When you see when you see this whole entire environment, just wait. <coughs> I've had people when they see these crossings flashing, I think it was two weekends ago, I had six cars cross in front of our train. I counted them. One, two, and then not one pause, not one stop. Ran right through it. All the gates, all the lights were flashing. Whenever you see these, just wait. Just get, all I tell people, is it really, is it really worth two seconds, two, two minutes at least, is it worth it? Are you going to proceed right through when you see these flashes? Gates down. People have ran through the gates. People have went around the gates. Impatient. And it's scary for us train crew because if we see a car come in front, that's all we hear. We're not going to hear a big boom and then it's like how you would feel it in a vehicle. All we hear is this. Just the sound. It's scary. We don't want to hear that. We don't like to hear it. Just wait. You see red lights flashing? Stop. Don't just stop and then, oh, I can go through. Is there any difference between flashing red lights and the red light on a traffic signal? Is there a difference? It's not legally. It's the same as a red light at a traffic signal. Which means trains pass through the crossing. Lights are still engaged. When can you leave and go? When the lights go off. Have you seen that differently in real life? As soon as the train goes through, back in the past, I'm going. But when, the, when the lights are flashing, legally, just like a red light, you're required to stop. Yeah, it's just like, for instance, the lights on your school bus. They're red. They flash in the same pattern as the river crossing, back and forth. People wait for you. People wait for your kids to get on their Most of the time, yes. There are those impatient people. But think about it. Those impatient people do the same kind of river crossing. They can't wait for you. They can't wait for this. We want all people <coughs> to wait. Pick that moment. It's not going to be forever. It's going to be for those couple of minutes, couple of seconds. And also, Pay attention to this. Right underneath that crosswalk, in this case, in the example, says there's three tracks. If there's more than one track, there will always be this sign there to tell you there's more than one track. Because when you get to a crossing, one train may be going one way. When that train gets done, it's always possible there's another train on the other track. That was that was, the instance, that was the instance for a lot of people, emergency vehicles, police officers, firefighters. No one's, no one can go around these gates. When these gates are down, when those lights are flashing, everybody has to completely stop. Regardless if they respond to an emergency call, if you have to get somewhere, you have to stop when these are down. Hard way, I've seen, I've seen a lot of things, especially on social media, which are very shocking where someone has went around these gates, a slow moving train 25 miles an hour. You can't hear the other train on that track, on the second track, coming at 55 miles an hour. You wait, you wait, when the gates go up, let me ask anybody this question. When the gates go up and the lights are still flashing, do you still go, yeah. if the gates are up? No. Because the gate may go up, but then again, it'll go right back down. And it's happened, it happens in a lot of cases. Most people don't realize, why is the gates going back down? They never focused on that next train coming. You can't hear because the slow moving train, 25 miles an hour, is making all the noise, screeching, metal on metal. They only hear that other train just wailing on through with its horn. You can't hear it. It's being blocked off. The train can sneak up quick. I've learned that as a kid, too. I used to watch trains go by from walking, riding my bike, and about to come up to a crossing. Trains sneak up. You're not going to hear them, but when they're right on you, it's there. Now, this little, <coughs> whenever you see an airplane in the air, see how slow it's going? She's traveling real, real slow. How fast do you think that plane's going? 
600 miles an hour. Five something miles an hour. How many? Six or seven. Uh, yeah. Three to 600 yeah. miles an hour. Accurately, three, 300 miles an hour at least. Same thing with a train. You see it in that distance. I've seen it. I've seen it before looking at a train from a distance. Oh, it's in the distance. It's, it's going to come eventually. Nope, it's traveling 50, 60 miles an hour. It's coming. It is rolling fast. You can never, ever tell the difference. You can't measure the distance of a train coming at you when it's racing, when it's moving. Don't pass. Don't shift. Don't stop. Don't pass. People, people have had an instance where you're waiting at a train just, it's not flashing lights. <coughs> if you see someone stop at a line where it's just a cross bus, and they're sitting there, would you ever go around them? Would you ever go around them thinking they're just sitting there, just to be sitting there? <coughs> or would you wait with them? Wait. You better wait. 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 Because they're sitting at a crossing that doesn't have lights and the X. There's a train right there. There's been instances people have went around the car sitting at the tracks, they get hit. And the person that's been waiting, and they're caught too because when the vehicle gets hit, gone. People have a tendency not to wait. Shift gears. I've actually had a friend who was shifting gears, coming over the train tracks, about to hit a light, traffic light, his car stalled. Mm -hmm. That is scary. When your car stalls and you're stuck on the tracks, he's in a panic. He's trying to get it, he's trying to get it, he's trying to get it. Luckily, there was no, at the time when we were young, didn't know about the blue sign or anything. We just got out, called the police and everything. Thank God that train came across at that time. But when he shifted, it caused his car to stall and it stopped right there. The wheel, back wheel was in the middle of the track. He panicked. Just because you're shifting gears coming up to a red light. Stick your car. Don't stop on the tracks. This is one thing I see all the time. When you're at a red light, have you seen a car? Here's an intersection, here's the train tracks. They're right on top of each other. Have you seen cars stop on top of the train tracks and not paying any mind to them? I see it all the time. I had one go around me. Before the tracks go around me, and stop on the track to wait for the... And people don't get it. Whenever you come up to an intersection, they don't focus at that railroad crossing. They're looking at the red light. And it, it happens in Salisbury a lot. Where I'm at, they'll stop and I'm watching. I'm like, what are you doing? And trains travel fairly slow, fairly fast, about 25, 30 miles an hour. Train's right there. By the hospital. Stop right on top of the tracks. Waiting for the red light. The train's just coming up slowly. Like train's green. Thank God it got out of the way, but don't stop. Don't stop on the tracks. If you're at a traffic light, wait behind. That intersection where that train tracks at the intersection, treat the train track stop line as your stop line for the traffic light. It's not worth it. You can be sitting there, oblivious, not knowing the gates are going to go down. You're sitting right on top of the tracks. <coughs> Distance, 15 feet. You want to keep space. Space. Train is wider than the track. Always good to give enough space. Give the train space at any time. I actually had, every time when I'm coming to a crossing, I give it a lot of space. You may never know. Sometimes it's actually a good thing to give it space because if there's a car stuck on those tracks or stopped on those tracks, he has time to either back up and get out of the way too to fit himself if there's a small enough car to get out of the way if you sit in a traffic light. So you ain't giving us space whenever you're coming to a railroad crossing. And as a bus driver, it's not only the space that's in front of you, correct? It's that space that's behind you. And understanding, you know, having that feel for the length of your vehicle and that safety room that you need on the back side. Very important. What do we see in this picture with the locomotive? Has everyone ever noticed when you see a train and it's wider than the track? Let's take a look at this right here. 
not only you can see about three feet. Remember, there's these handrails. The train loads behind it could be wider than the locomotives. It can span from three to five feet. Trains move a lot of things. They move automobiles. They even move fuselages for planes. They're wide. They're going to be always wider than those tracks, no matter what. People have a tendency not to realize the overhang of the trains. When I'm around, when I'm hooking up the trains, putting them together, I look at it. I'm like, wow, it's actually wider, a lot wider. It's not like you can walk down those ties next to that rail and think, oh, the train's not going to hit me. It is. It's wider. People have a tendency to pull over the crossing, pull up at that line or over the line. Remember, your nose is still sticking out. The train's wider, it will clip. Mm. Has anyone ever seen someone uh, doing makeup while driving? Yeah. <coughs> what's, what's the, what's the point? Why? Why do you make up while driving? Newspapers? I, I can understand everybody's worked their overtime of hours, they're tired. Or dragging, trying to get home. Of course, eating. You know, you're really hungry. And then there's this. That's the worst. Yeah. Our nation's problem now. <laughs> and this does come in contact at River Crossing. I don't know. I just don't understand why people do this. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know, I, saw, I actually saw it two days ago. A woman going into Ocean City. <laughs> doing her makeup and stuff. while was rocking. And swerving. Um, what's the point? Why? I don't, I don't understand that. I just... Reading, and I, I understand just it's a distraction. I don't know what it. I don't know what's the point of doing it, but I don't know. Just, people, just, people just do things. I don't know. It's a distraction now. <laughs> this is one thing I want to tell people: it is not good ever to trespass, trespass across the tracks. Walk on the tracks. Would anyone be shocked here that probably three weekends ago, working on our excursion train, we had someone jogging on the tracks? Yeah. Whip her headphones in. Oh, she was ahead of our train. I had to alert the crew member in the back. I said, Is that someone jogging on her tracks? He said, Yes, it is. She's just jogging along, not even picking up the step like running. She's just casually jogging. We're not there. We're traveling like 15, 10 to 15 miles an hour. It's okay. This, this I see all too well. I went back out to the tracks after our excursion ride. We have another train running to find six more people fishing off our bridge, walking on the bridge, kids hanging out, walking down the tracks. What are you all doing? Why? I, I mean, there's some kids that live in population areas that want to get home, they're going to school, <coughs> take a little shortcut. Right there in Silverville. Mm -hmm. They walk, they right, right down, they come mm -hmm. out of the middle school and they go right down the railroad track. Sure. And they don't understand, it can sneak up. At least six of them, I've got at least six at a time going home on the railroad track. Crazy. We try to avoid this, especially these habits. We want people to know this is not a good habit. It, <coughs> to say that a train will sneak up on you, it, it's happened. I've, I've even seen trains, I can hear them just the last minute. They could be right there and then boom, you can start hearing it. It's that sound effect. It's that effect of where <coughs> sound moves. And to highlight, you know, the point of trespassing, mm -hmm. why we bring it up here to you as a bus driver. Throughout history, the majority of all deaths and injuries that involved a train happened at a railroad crossing. Two years ago in 2017, for the first time ever, there were more deaths and injuries on the right of way than there were at the railroad crossings. So this is a very real issue here. 
I think a lot of safety things, awareness campaigns, training, has gotten people to be a little more aware and a little more safety conscious and our message be just that little bit more patient. Uh, where some of the incidences and therefore crashes and whatnot have reduced at crossings, but they're still in the right of way. It's popular to take pictures in the right, it's prom time, let me go out to the railroad tracks as a background and take pictures. You know, an ad campaign on TV, uh, they're there and you should not be. You don't hear a train, you're walking down or talking, you know, how close is that train to you before you hear it? So if you hear it, you're dead. You don't have time to get out of the way. So you have to exercise a lot of caution. And then when you're taking your in, uh, free time to go play on the tracks or whatnot, you're just putting your life in danger. So just as an extra message, please be aware, be cautious. <coughs> and don't go on that private property. And that's another thing too, <coughs> Sam. The two, the couple of lovebirds playing on the bridge, I'm trying to reach to them before the next train was coming in. You know, I was trying to get a hold of the engineer of that train, let him know. I got trespassers on the bridge, I got trespassers on the bridge. He got right there to the curb of that bridge, I'm on the other span of that bridge. They did not realize until the engineer blew his horn. Mm -hmm. You can hear the engineer was actually revving up his engine about to go back up the hill, and they did not hear it. The girl jumped up and freaked out. I saw her reaction was just like, yep, there's a train there. She's like, I did not hear it at all coming. At all. Right there, the last minute. So as we can see, people, and it's, it's happened a lot. People, instead of taking that long route, instead of using a sidewalk, bridge, well, I don't want to go over a bridge and stuff. Go right down, travel over the tracks. They'll take it. They'll take the little shortcut, but at what cost? Why? What's the point of going <coughs> over the bridge, going down the tracks, going uh, going in places where you shouldn't be? Which is why we tell people it's it's a scary image for a train crew. We're looking. And just, me being as young as I am and to see these things, I couldn't believe it. I can see it in the paper, I can see it on videos and stuff, but actually seeing it in real life, it's it's scary. It's like, I never thought I could put myself in a situation where someone would do this, we're going to a tunnel. Let's see a tunnel. I think it's pretty cool walking there, no, it's not cool. Train crew blows, we blow, the, we blow our horns before the tunnel and after the tunnel for two reasons. Before the tunnel, people can just start walking in Second reason, if we're coming out, people can just come right out. They can walk right behind the tunnel and get ready to walk in, not knowing there's a train there, regardless if the sound's traveling through the tunnel. It's just those things. There's a little reminder on this. Everybody see this? Yep. See where the stop line is? Bus is back here. Sometimes people will stop right here. You know, I always thought, because it happened, it's happened to me before, someone has stopped right on that crossing, they took a second chance in thinking, should I go and try to beat the train? Should I proceed on through? And what catches them is their sense. Oh, my life. They waited the last minute, they stopped, slammed on brakes. They're right there and they're like, I'm not taking that chance. And it's shocking. Why? We want people to wait 15 to 50 feet. If you have space, like back here, stay back here. After the crossing, people people have a tendency to just go. They don't ever judge the size of the bus, which happened in Illinois. School bus driver went through it. Years ago, went through the crossing, right before the stoplight, three feet of the bus was hanging out, right on the tracks. It was a bad day, and it was hit. 60 mile an hour train. 
Bus is overhang on the track. Stop at a light. Light turn green. Two cars in front. Light turn red again. Pulled over to the tracks. It was scary. Kids were trying to get out. So it was just the misjudgment of the room she had and going over the tracks. So just wait back here. Wait. Even before, when you're pulling up to the stop line, if you can see the stop line at the nose of your bus, that's good. That's where you want to be at. You don't want to be anywhere over that line or close to where you can't see it. Now, has anyone ever seen these exempt signs before on any of their routes? This is your quiz for today. What does that exempt sign mean to you? Going across that there's no train coming. Exception. No. Exempt. There is exception of certain top five. That's talking about What what the exempt sign means. Does it mean it's closed? No, it does not. What the exempt sign means is that a petition was raised to the local uh, transportation authority for vehicles not to be required to stop at a railroad crossing before passing over. So it's a, it's an exception. That's what the yeah. exempt sign means. Okay. However, that exempt sign never, on any state in the United States, means that a school bus can pass without stopping. <laughs> so even if there is an exempt sign at a particular crossing, it does not apply to a school bus. First time I've ever heard that. <clears throat> yes. Well, why wouldn't you even put that up? Because everybody's yeah. not going to understand what this means. Right. Right. Yeah. I agree. I would rather there be none. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Uh, but there were cases for you know whatever reason, business wise, for like hazmat vehicles and things like that. You know, petitioned and got approved where those types of vehicles did not have to stop, and therefore the crossing was exempt. Now there's all kinds of reasons, and it's true that it's possible train service has been suspended for a while, so there's no longer train service there, so the exempt sign means that there's no expectation of a train, those vehicles can pass, but not for a school bus, even in that case. But it doesn't always mean that there's no train anymore. <laughs> I wanted to bring that up just to make sure that you are aware you still have to proceed if you do have one of these money routes. This is what we're trying to avoid. Right here. There's some posters on the front of the room that show the same thing with the school bus. That bus in Illinois when it got hit. It took the whole entire bus off the frame. The bus took a 180 degree spin. So, shell of the bus was on one side, the frame was on the other. You could just see the frame and the four wheels sitting there. So it gets back to our message of that little bit of patience, that extra amount of caution and care for especially the valuable cargo that you haul, which is our most valuable cargo in the world. It's I'm scary sure. it's scary for us Frank to see that. It's just when we see it, it's now, this picture, of time. Can you see the railroad crossing? No. In that picture? No. So how far after the impact did it cross oh, that truck? Think of that train. This is a tractor trailer. This is not an ordinary car. This is a tractor trailer that has been pushed. And you can see in this corner, you can see pieces. That's where he was first struck. That. I can go even farther. He can be struck and well, that's where drive. He just dropping off. Yeah, that'll pop out. So our three fans have been around for a very, very long time. Look, listen, and live. We look, we listen for the train, 
go through the experience. Now, has anyone seen this before? Because I have. You've never seen this before? Just put one of them park like. The tracks are right next to the intersection. It is a part of the intersection. Yeah, there's one up there. It'd be if yeah. 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 the guy went around me and parked on the other side. So you don't have to realize. Well, that. I mean, my service dropped the trail line. I mean, I didn't do that, so I was just waiting. And the guy went right home behind me, stopped on the track, and that train comes through there not fast, but it's got a lot of freight to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if your bus route has ever had a turn, what would you do in this situation? If you had to come up to the intersection, the tracks are right there. You have the crossing right there, and the intersection right there. What would you do? Find out. Park. 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 If you had to turn, and you know how to stand a procedure, stop, look, you open your doors. How would you have to do that, especially going through an intersection? If you had to make that right turn and the tracks are right there, what would you do? You're still on the highway. I'd get on the shoulder before I got there. In this case, you have to stop on the main road first. Yeah. Or right the shoulder. Because you know, understand the length of your vehicle, you don't have enough room to make the turn and stop safely before the tracks. So you have to stop on the main highway first, engage your safety procedures, right? And then creep up around the corner to inch up with your door open, you know, your window open, all that. You still have to pull your brake yet when you get here, right? So now you're stopping twice making sure it's safe to pass and then passing through. But there's extra precaution here, and, and this is a, a, a point nationally we're trying to uh, bring to everybody's attention, because there's a lot of these. Traditionally, roads were built parallel to the railroad tracks. There's a lot of these where the, where the intersections are very short and you don't have room, so it's something to bring awareness, especially to you all as bus drivers, for that extra piece of precaution. And I, I guess in an earlier class, someone mentioned, well, it's the same situation you have if the railroad track comes across at a big skew to your roadway. Because sometimes it's very difficult to see down the track from your point of view and your <coughs> angle. So you have to be extra careful in those cases. And if you have, as a note, if you have limited visual clearance for your sight distance, and it's something about a road or trees or whatnot, contact your local transportation authority so they can clean it. I did, but they never did anything. Because I, when I'd stop, I couldn't see the trees in all or up high, and I couldn't see in Robert Station, and then I have to get up too close to look down there. Be a squeaky wheel. Big weed patch around there. Mm -hmm. There's also a tree that came down last night there on the highway. On I saw it this morning over there. <laughs> that looked like it's a little bit too close for comfort. Yeah. Now you stand a chance of getting hit by a car or train. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Like you're Matthew it Salisbury, right you'll see them about 13 by the hospital and stuff. The, car, the tracks are literally right but, there. But if you've got yeah. trees yeah. blocking the vision, you know. I think in a bus driver's point of view, I would tell my uh, my supervisor that I'm going to have to change my route. <laughs> That's too high of a risk. Absolutely. And don't be afraid to make that request. That's right. Change your route. You know, maybe it's impossible to do that. I don't know. But they can always look at it and make that request. Thank you. So this is it. Truck. 40 tons, two zeros added to that, 6,000 tons, if not more. A train can be from 5,000 feet to 8,500 feet, if not more long. You got all that weight, especially behind it. As most people don't know, we can't stop on a dime. <laughs> people think that if we see a car, we hit the emergency brake, or no, we see a car and hit it, they think we're, we're, we didn't see it, we never stopped. We've already slammed on the emergency brake by the time we saw that car. All that weight. You got two locomotives, you got all the weight just pushing it. 
Right on third. Sometimes you have two and three locomotives. Mm -hmm. And I got 85 cars behind. There's nothing stopping. We're going to come to a screeching halt until all that weight has subsided and starts slowing down from all the braking. But from there on, when we hit the emergency brake, it's coasting on third. It's trying to come to a stop with all that weight behind it. Something to understand about trains. When do you think is the most dangerous time for that train to operate? For that crew themselves on the train? What situation puts them in the most danger? Emergency stop. If they have to force that train to an emergency stop, there's so much weight, so many forces that are occurring, that's when you have the most likelihood for the train to derail and then something even more catastrophic to occur when that train has to go into an emergency lockdown stop car. The crew it's, it's never sucks. wants to do that. And we do anything to avoid it. The last time our train makes <laughs> emergency brake, boom, boom. It's just loud bang. And it's very, very loud. It's each scary. Car, each car will taken up. All the slack just comes together, starts closing up like an accordion. So it's very loud. All that weight just shifting. And it's scary. It's scary for us. The up there in Suttersville, up around on 301, that way, and all. They're real good whether anybody's around them or not. They always give that signal to way off so they, you can hear them coming. They're very and good with that. Very, very big awareness. I, a lot of people that live by the mm -hmm. tracks, they don't like to hear that train horn or say, oh my God, it's noisy and stuff, but it's our awareness that we give to the public, That's give right. to you all as drivers, that we're coming. That's we're right. approaching that crossing. And it's a legal requirement if you're approaching a crossing. And it's up to the engineer as well. Yeah, it's good. But as you're approaching a crossing, there's a legal requirement to how many times you blow that horn, that horn, how long you blow that horn, and as you're going through the crossing. Mm -hmm. So they're required to do it, number one. But it's up to that engineer in the train. He can do it more. You know, if he sees something, he can do it at any time that he sees something that's up to him. Mm -hmm. Control that. Makes sense. <coughs> wow. Did you ever believe that? Wow. That greater than wow. Yeah. Okay. So we thank you for our opportunity to talk with you this morning. And if you have any other questions, we'd be glad to field those questions for you. And like I said, if you're traveling on your route, just whenever you come across that cross and look for that blue sign, you'll know it's there. You can contact us. You can contact the state. Is it transportation? Would you contact if there's no blue sign? That's at every crossing and the critical importance of the information that's there to avoid potential catastrophe. And number two, take that extra piece of patience. Be aware. Mm -hmm. And expect that train's going to be there when you get to the closet. Thank you. I'd just like to imagine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.